Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting a Nemesis Dread Knight. Yes, the apex predator of the Grey Knights themselves, yes. It looks like a big intimidating model, but it actually should be reasonably simple to paint. And well, we're going to jump in and start painting him. Now, he has been primed in Grey Sear, and the first colour we're going to be using is Grey Knight Steel, and we're going to be using this for all of the Grey Knight's silver. So this is going to be the outer armour plates. So for example, this knee, the foot, the whole of this leg's armour plates, the Terminator himself, the arms, the body, all of this kind of area. What we're not going to do is this shin guard, because you can do some heraldry on here, which looks pretty cool. And also, we're not going to be painting the inner workings of the Dread Knight, because that's going to be a slightly different silver. This will give us a lot of nice kind of distinguishing features and colours between the two. So with that said, we are going to start with the Grey Knight still, and we're going to be painting this all over this foot. And we're going to work our way up the model to make sure that we don't miss parts. And this keeps it nice and consistent. It means we just keep a handle on things. Now, some areas are a bit mechanical in nature. For example, that little joint just there on the foot. We're still going to be doing those Grey Knights still because it's just a lot simpler for us as the painter to not have to worry about distinguishing that particular detail out. Now, it might take a couple of thin coats as well to ensure that you've got a good enough coverage of the Grey Knight Steel all over the larger areas. So with that Grey Knight Steel applied all around like this, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Iron Warriors I'm going to use this to paint in the rest of the silver details on the body. Again, we're not worrying about the weapons just yet. We're just focusing on the body itself. So I'm just going to start again down here at the bottom. And then work my way up. We're looking for mostly just the mechanical areas. As you can see, that's already creating some serious contrast between the brightness of the armour and the workings of the machine. to really work it in. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of this silver. Now, as you can see, we've got two different types of silver on here. Well, you know this from having just applied it yourself, but we're going to be using two different shades here. Now, the first one we're going to use is Space Wolves Grey, and this is going to be for all of the Grey Knight's armour. And this is going to give us a lovely bluish texture from which to build up from. And well, similarly to how we started it, we are just going to start from the bottom. We're just going to start painting our way up the model, just like this. Now, we're hoping for a reasonably smooth finish here, but we are going to be layering it up. So it doesn't matter too much if you get a couple of dark blobs. Hence the reason we're going straight from the pot. It's going to be okay if we do get some slight patchiness. This is just really going to punch up the bluish nature of our Dread Knight's armour, which is exactly what we want. As I said, do just try your hardest to keep it as smooth as possible. It will make the layering up part a little bit, little bit a lot easier. <laughs> Inventing words today.
So with that done, what we're now going to do is shade all of those darker metal pieces, the Iron Warriors. And the colour we're going to be using is Basilicarum Grey. Now what I've done is I've created a large puddle of it, four or five brushfuls, and then I've added one drop of contrast medium in there just to improve the flow. And just take the edge off it slightly. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to lather this on to all of our Iron Warriors areas, just like this. You don't want to be shy with it. Really get it on there. I've just switched the camera back on. We're still doing the Basilicanum Grey, and we just remembered <laughs> that what we're also going to do is we're going to use this as our pre shade now for all of our black details. So, all of these cables, for example, we're going to paint this Basilicanum Grey over the top of, as well as the larger casings on the weapons at the back. So, for example, this sort of section just here. This is going to be our pre shade, as I said, for all of our black details. So we're kind of doing two things at once optimizing our workflow. So with our Dreadnought all nicely shaded, what we're going to do is we're going to start brightening up those metallics. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dry brush all of the dark metal with some Iron Hands Steel, which is over here for some reason. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start gently dry brushing this over the top of all of our dark metal, just to really bring out those edges and just make those details come to life. And we can do this all over all of these details like this. Now we're not going to be doing this over the top of our Grey Knight's armor, because that's going to be much, much brighter. So we're just going to be doing this over the dark metal. Now, if you do catch the Grey Knight's armor, it does not matter, because we're going to be doing some much, as I said, much brighter highlights and layers on that, because we want that to be nice and bright. So just go around like this. And I'm using a medium dry brush here for speed and for ease. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that dry brushing applied, you should have this lovely mechanical metal all the way around now. Now, again, don't worry because this is gonna start coming together very, very shortly. So we're still sticking with the Iron Hand Steel, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be layering up the Grey Knight's armor with this color. We're going to be painting this all over the flats of the panels, just like this. And we're going to be avoiding anywhere where we've got that really nice dark blue in the dark recesses. Around that rivet, for example, and over the top of that knee pad, just like that, it looks absolutely cracking. So we're going to be going all over like this, for example, just here on this thigh plate. Now I'd recommend thinning down your iron hand steel just a little bit more than normal. So it really comes off that brush nice and smooth like that, gives you that really lovely burnished gold finish. Like so. The other thing we're going to do with the iron hand steel is we're going to be looking out for any pistons. So we want these to be nice and bright. So for example, just here on this leg, we're just going to layer up with the iron hand steel like that. Same just in there. And then there's another one just under there like that. So just keep an eye out for those as you make your way around. And again, I would recommend starting from the bottom, working your way up, 
I know I didn't do that here with that foot, but that knee pad was just too tempting to paint. So with that now done, you should have a very blingy, very shiny Dread Knight. He looks awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our final silver highlight, and that is going to be some Storm Host Silver. And we're gonna be dry brushing this very gently over the raised upwards facing areas of our mechanical detail. So for example, just along here, we're not gonna go right in here because we want this to be kind of pinnacle highlight for those areas. Whereas for the Grey Knight's armor, you want to dry brush this Stormhose Silver all over. Just like this, just to give it some extra punch, some extra light points as well. So with that done, all of our silver is now finished. He looks absolutely fantastic, blingy and shiny. And well, it's now time to color in the rest of his details and really start pulling this model together. Now, the first color we're gonna be using is Black Templar. And we're gonna be using this over all of the black details that we have already previously coated with that Basilicanum gray. So you just wanna be very careful around the silver details that we've already finished. But otherwise, we're just going to get a nice smooth coat of Black Templar all over these details. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to be using this to paint in, well, all of our red details. Now, this is going to include areas such as the weapon casings. It's going to include the kind of wrap, soft wrap, weirdly, of the gigantic sword. And we're also going to paint in the demon up here on the shield. <laughs> the other areas include the little outlines of the books and we'll need a slightly different brush size for that. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Blood Angels Red and we're just gonna start on the weapon casings. We wanna get this all over. Don't worry about avoiding the, the writing just there. This is why we haven't done the gold yet. And so with that Blood Angels Red applied, we're then going to take some Flesh Terrors Red. I'm going to apply this to the field of the Tilting Shield. So around that design. Just like this. So with that done, don't worry too much about filling in the rest of the design, it's still drying at the moment. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to paint in what is possibly the most difficult part of this model, and that is going to be the sword. And it's because we want to get on with doing the gold, but we can't do the gold until we've done the sword. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Talisar blue mix. And we're going to very carefully paint a nice smooth layer of this over the top of the blade. So we're going to start down here at the base. I'm going to try as we, hard as we can to get it in one smooth brush stroke. And we've got a bit of schmutz here, which we can just lift off with the brush. Very gently. Like that. 
brush the brush. And then we're going to do the other side. So again, starting here, and then as carefully as possible, doing one long brush stroke. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to start adding in that kind of blending effect that you see on the Grey Knight Swords. So the colour we're going to make is roughly, it's half of what we did, two parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue. And we're going to pick a side to do it on, so I'm going to pick the left hand side here. I'm going to put it down to about halfway and then we're going to feather out that transition. So we take the paint on our brush, not too much here. We're just going to make contact with the model up here. And we're going to pull it down to around about halfway like that. Wash the brush and then just very quickly where that kind of brush stroke ends, just want to Dab away at it like that with a clean brush. Just moving that paint around so that the transition effect starts to happen. Like so. Similarly, on the opposite side, I'm going to start from the base. I'm going to bring it up to around about halfway. Wick it off. Wash the brush. and then smooth out the transition. And we're gonna do this two more times. So here we are then, second pass with that two parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue mixed. So once again, we're just gonna make contact towards the tip of the sword. I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna go a little bit less than last time. Wash the brush. And then once again, we're just gonna Smooth out that transition. Start from the base. Work our way up, a little bit less than last time. Clean brush. Smooth out the transition. And so for our final pass of this mix, two parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue, we're going to do it again. Exactly the same, only just a tiny bit less than normal. Really just looking to build up that transition between the colours, as you can see. So with that done, we're now going to do our darkest pass yet. This is going to be a one-to-one -one mix of Talisar Blue and Contrast Medium. And this is where we now want kind of quite hard transition, but not a hard transition as it were. So we're going to take this, and we're going to start there again, and we're going to come down to around halfway. Of where we've been doing our two-to-one buildup. And we're just going to feather it out again, just like that. Same from the base. Halfway. Wash the brush. And then feather it out. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Temple Guard Blue. We're going to add a little bit more visual interest to our blade. Then what we're going to do is we're going to very, very carefully highlight all of the edges of the blade. Like 
like so. But what we're also going to do is we're going to add a couple of little shiny marks to it. And the way we do this is by taking a small amount of this on our brush and just wherever you please. So I'm going to do some kind of round about halfway here. We're going to do a diagonal line going across the blade like this. And we want the first one to be quite wide. Like that. And we're going to do a much narrower one just below it. Like that. And we're going to do a couple up here as well. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Bacharoth blue. We're going to do a much narrower highlight here. So for example, just about half. Of our long blade edges. Do a little bit more than that. Like so. Uh, and on our shiny marks, what we're going to do is going to take our Bacharoth blue and basically gonna out highlight one end of them. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is take a tiny amount of Corax white. I'm going to apply this as our kind of final highlight. Just a little too much on the tip just there. Just wipe that off with the thumb. Coming down to about a third. Of our highlights like that. Then on our shiny marks, we just want to add a tiny little bit. Closest to the nearest edge. So with that done, on both sides of the blade, what we're now going to do is a final little flourish is we're going to take a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue mix. I'm just going to very carefully paint this over the top of our shiny marks. And then we're just going to pull it out just a little bit either side. We can always wash the brush and smooth it out if we need to. This just makes it all feel very much closer and part of the scene. So with that done, our blade is now finished. And it looks awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint in all the gold details. Now the color we're gonna be using for this is Retributor Armor. And of course, I am just gonna start here on the sword because I want to be very, very careful here. Just like that. And we're picking out a lot of details all the way around the model. So for example, all of the little bits of script. 
that are sculpted onto the armour. Any heraldry. So with all of those gold details applied, as you can see, all the way around our dreadnought, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the papery details. This is mostly kept to the books and things like that, but we do have some areas such as this kind of little papery nameplate down here. And with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Black Templar and we're going to use this to paint in areas such as the horns, our little devil up here, as well as the spines, and the hair of the beast. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Apothecary White. I'm going to paint this over the tabard of our knight. Just hit here like that. And then we're also going to paint this over the top of this large plate here. But we don't need to do the whole thing. What we can do is we can just add a little bit of Apothecary White around each of the rivets. Because we are going to be re-layering this some Corax white, so we don't need to do the whole thing. Just don't have too much on your brush when you're doing this. If you wanted to just leave it like that, that colour, you absolutely could. If you are going to just leave it that colour, another thing to do would be to just do a little recess shade. around the knee plate. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some iron warriors. We're gonna use this to paint in the armor of our knight. Just up here. On our tilting shield. Sword blade. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some talisar blue. I'm going to paint this on this smooth cable just here. Like that. Of course, don't forget to do the other side as well. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on on our Nemesis Dread Knight, so it's time to add a shade. And the next one is going to be Fire Slayer Flash. And we're going to be doing this over the top of all of our gold details. Just like that. Make sure to really work it in. Because it can be a little temperamental. So with that done, our Nemesis Dread Knight is now at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. I mean, he's obviously a little bit further along than that, courtesy of that sword blade. But what we're going to do now is going to continue taking him further. Now the colour we're going to be using next is Corax White. And we're going to be using this 
to make our white leg plate nice and bright. And we're just going to take that little bit of hair off the end of the brush and we are just going to start painting this over the flat on our leg plate. Just like this. Now we're going to be avoiding, where possible, where we place that apothecary white. keep our shading intact. So with that Corax white applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add our heraldry stripe going down the middle of it, but we're also gonna highlight our flesh terrors red up here. Now the color we're gonna be using for this is Mephiston red. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this on our brush and we're just going to start with the highlight up here. And we're just going to run this Mephiston Red going along the edges of our tilting plate. Just like that. Whereas, as I said, for the heraldry on the plate, on the leg, what we're going to do, we're just going to do a stripe going down the middle. So basically what we want to do is we want to pick how where we want to start, and I'm going to start just up here. I'm going to draw as straight a line as possible, going down like this, and then we're going to continue it along on the bottom, like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to draw another straight line, going all the way down like that. And then with that done, we're going to switch to a slightly bigger brush. We're just going to block it in. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to do, use some thinned down white scar. We're going to use this to highlight our white detail. So for example, down here, we are going to pick out the rivet. We're going to pick out the edge. On the plate. With those white details all nicely highlighted, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to use this to highlight all of the red details. So, what we're going to do down here is we're going to highlight around the stripe. And if you feel up to it, you can highlight along the hand as well. We're going to add a little spot highlight of this to our tilting shield. Just kind of picking out the top edge, that little corner just there, that little corner there. Then we're going to highlight the demon. And then we're going to highlight with the Evil Sun Skylight our weapon casings. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of our black details. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Dawnstone. As per usual, 
we are just going to pick a place to start and I'm going to start just here on the weapon casing. We're just going to be picking out all of the edges. Just like this. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our parchment. And so with that Screaming Skull applied, it is now time to highlight all of the gold. Now the color we're gonna be using for this is Canoptic Alloy. We're just gonna pick a place to start and we're gonna work our way around the model once again. So I'm just gonna start just down here on the leg. Just picking out all of the letters. So with that done, all that's left to do is the gems, and there's not very many of them, which is very surprising <laughs> on a model of this size. But as you can see, there are not many at all. We've got two just under here, we've got the eye lenses, and we've got these ones here on the back as well. Now, the majority of them are blue, but these two under here are going to be red. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Talisar blue, first of all. I'm going to paint this over the top of all of our blue ones. So we're just going to start here on the on the eye lenses. Just like this. And with that done, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this over the top of our red lenses, just down here. So with that, Blood Angels Red Applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to highlight our lenses and the first colour we're going to be using for this is Baharos Blue. And this is going to be for our blue gems. Just like this. Similarly on the back, what we're going to do, we're just going to run this Baharos Blue around the outside of the bottom right corner of each of them. And for our red gems, we're going to take a tiny amount of Fire Dragon Bright. We're going to similarly just add a little highlight into the bottom right corner of both of them. Just like that. And so with that done, we're then going to take a tiny dot of Corax White. We're going to add this in the back corner of both of our eye lenses. Just like that. We're also gonna add a dot in the top left corner of all four of our gems. Just like that. And so, having completed the base, of course, in the same style as the Arcane Wastelands basing recipe that you can see here on YouTube, this Nemesis Dread Knight is now finished. Or is he a Grandmaster? Who knows? That's entirely up to you, Rich. You can play him however you want. 
Really pleased with how he's turned out though. It's always fun when a infantry scheme scales up perfectly to something of this size and um, I've always wanted to do a Dread Knight. They're a funny looking miniature, but I love them somehow. Just adore these models. I think they're really, really cool. So yeah, lots and lots of fun for me. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.